Hey everybody, Trey here. Just wanted to give you an update to where I'm at with my Marlin 2 Color UI firmware for the Elegoo Neptune 2. I really want to give a special shout out to Lee 122382 as well for providing the 2D configuration so that setup is included. I couldn't have done any of this work without the support I've gotten from the Elegoo Neptune 2 Facebook group and Reddit groups. I really appreciate all the feedback. Now let's go ahead and get rolling. I've provided the link to the firmware in the video description as well, as well as some other links for things I think you may find useful. There are a few preparation steps you're going to want to take before installing this firmware. So let's go over those steps really quick. If you've tuned your printer, especially the E-Steps, I really suggest you go ahead and run an M503 to get all your current values. This firmware is going to remove the values tuned and put them back to stock 2S and 2D configurations. I really suggest you use the SD card that came with your printer or make sure you're using an SD card that is 8 gigs or smaller. The SD card needs to be formatted as FAT32. All right, let's go ahead and get the firmware installed. Now, I'm using a Linux system, so it may look a little different than what you're familiar with, but it pretty much operates the same way, and the steps I'm going to be doing are all very common. If you click a link in my video description, it'll take you to this page. This page has a download link for the firmware. Under Setup and Install, you click Download the Latest Version here. Save that to the location of your choice. I'm going to put it on my desktop. And then we're going to take that file and extract it. I'm going to take this file, take the configuration I want. To identify your configuration, go back to the web page. This explains how everything is organized. Basically, there's a 1-2 board and a 1-3 board. You need to figure out which board you're going to have. That's available down in the facts section. It'll tell you how to identify your board. But once you've identified your board, basically if you have a 2D, you would use one of the 2D configurations for your board. And then if you have a BL touch or not, you would also use that configuration. So I know that I have a 1-3 board with a BL touch. So I know that I'm gonna to wanna to use this file. This is the file I'm gonna to copy to my SD card. Once the file is copied, I'm going to eject it. I'm going to take the card out and I'm going to go put it in my machine. Make sure your machine is powered off before you put the card in. As I've been experimenting with this, I found that the touch screen isn't very responsive. What I figured out was if you use a stylus, it's much easier to use. So what I've done is on the Things website, I have a stylus you can download. I, add, I found the stylus, somebody else created it. But I added this clip here so you can put it right on your Neptune so it doesn't get lost. Anyway, you can slide this out right here. And there you have your stylus and you can touch on the screen to get going. Let's go ahead and flash that firmware. I've taken the SD card, loaded it into my machine, and the machine is powered off. When I turn my machine back on, it will automatically start to install. This doesn't take that long to do because it's a rather small file. Once the firmware installs, you get to the touch screen calibration. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to touch each corner to calibrate your screen. Takes a minute, only a few seconds. And there we go, the firmware is up. All right, now that we're up and running, the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is PID auto-tune your hot end and bed. To do that, click this settings icon, go to configuration, advanced settings, next page, temperature, and this is your hot end here. So you're gonna to wanna to click that, PID auto-tune, E1, hit check, and let it go. Hey, I'm back just to kind of give you a progress update. 
This only takes a few minutes, but you'll see on the main screen, it should go back to that automatically after you started this process. You'll see the nozzle heat up and you'll see it say PID cycles. When that goes through all five cycles, it's done. And then you can move on to the next step. All right, when it's done, you'll see it says Elegoo Neptune 2 ready. Now we're gonna to go again, we're gonna to go to the options menu, configuration, advanced settings, next page, temperature, PID auto tune bed, 50 degrees. I bump it up to 60. You can do 50, that's fine. This is just getting a general range. It's not gonna vary that much. Hit the check mark, and then it'll say wait for heat up, and it will go through the same process again. You'll see the cycles count at the bottom, and then when it's done, it'll say Elegoon Neptune 2 ready. Okay, now the next step we're gonna do is a very important one. You're gonna be using it a lot as you're modifying settings. Click on the configuration icon, click on configuration, Next page, click store settings. Your machine will beep. Anytime you change any setting and you want it to persist across reboots, you're gonna wanna store your settings. Otherwise they'll get lost when you turn off and on your machine. Okay, the next thing you're gonna wanna do if you have a stock Neptune, not a Neptune 2S, or you've run M503 and you have your steps per millimeters that you set for your E-steps, you're gonna to wanna to click the configuration icon, configuration, advanced settings, steps per millimeter. So you'll see that the X and Y are defaulted to 80, the Z is uh, 400, and the E's are 133. I know mine are 95, so I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna bump that down. You can slide this slider, but it seems to be very sensitive. Oh, it was really close. And then I jumped to 213. All right. I know I'm at 95. Check. Back. I'm going to go ahead and go back and configuration and store those settings. All right. If you have a BL touch and your probe offsets are not that of the default BL touch settings, you can modify those too. Again, the same configuration menu, configuration, advanced settings, probe offsets, probe, probe X offset is what I want to change. I know mine is 47.5. You don't have to get it perfect. We're talking a tenth of a millimeter. And again, go back, back, next, store. It takes a while to get used to where all the menus are. Okay, now, this is the fun part. If you have a file you want to print, click on the card. Then click there, and it'll ask you if you want to start the print. The menus can be different based on your configuration. The menus that you're seeing here are set for a Neptune 2 with a BL touch and not a 2D. If you do not have a BL touch or you have a 2D, your menu options are going to be slightly different. Okay, let's walk through some of the features. The first thing I want to share with you is how to move the bed around and items like that and home. So what you can do is you type, click right in the middle of the screen, anywhere on this row actually, and it'll bring up this screen. This screen allows you to move your X, your Y, your extrusions. You can move the Z up and the Z down. You can set the amount, how far it's going to do in each motion by here. And then this off turns your steppers off. If I want to go up, 10 millimeters on the Z, I would have that at 10 millimeters, and I'd click the plus, and you'll see it bounce up. It'll tell me the current position that it's at. 
Same thing for all the other items. Not a home, just click the home. Now, when you're homing, everything seems to kind of freeze up. So anything you click isn't going to take until after it homes, obviously. So let it finish before you do anything or even go back. You'll see I can't go back to the main menu. All right, now that it's done, you can see, hey, I'm going to go back to the main menu. All right. Now, the configuration menus. Let's walk through these. All right. The, info, the top option is always back to where you were previously. So if I click on that, it's going to take me right back to the info screen. Motion. You can move. You can auto home. Both of these are more convenient from the other option I think I showed you. You can disable your steppers and move things, you know, manually move things around. It's not going to let you do anything until you home again so that it's sure it's on the right um, location. Um, bed leveling, this will differ on your settings, but you can level the bed. You can have it on or off, fade height, your probe Z offset. Um, that's how far your probe is from your nozzle. I'll walk over that later. Bed tramming I've talked about. And then you can store your settings right from here as well. Let's go ahead and do that because I did make some changes with my um, leveling. Okay. Now let's go back. All right. Temperatures. Here I can set my nozzle temperature to preheat however I want just by turning this up and hitting the check mark. I'm not going to do that. Bed. Same thing. You want to warm up your bed. Just adjust it. Hit the check mark. Fans you can check and test their speeds, um, various percentages. So my fan's running at 54% now. My cooling fans are now at 100%. So you can do all of those. And then if you want to turn it off, just slide it back down to zero. Check. You can pre PLA, PETG, and ABS. When you click those, by the way, It'll just say, hey, I want to do the whole thing, the hot end or the bed. So if you want to preheat, it'll take you here. And you'll see the two settings updated here. So you can see it's going to shoot for 200. Right now it's at 36. It's going to shoot for 50. It's at 31. I'm going to turn that off. Uh, one thing that's kind of silly it, that I did as well. Um, let me show you with the fans. Um, where is that? Fan speed. If you turn that up, I just thought this was kind of cute. If you go back to the home screen, the fan actually animates now, so you can see that your fan's in motion. Silly little enhancement. All right, I'm going to turn these off. pre e p l a I'm going to stop that, and I'm going to go to nozzle, turn that back down to zero, bed, turn that back down to 50, I mean turn that back off, fans off. Configuration. You can set your probe Z offset here. You can set, you can do different features with your BL touch. If you have a filament runout sensor, it's defaulted to on. You can turn it off. You can define the temperatures you want for your different uh, preheat settings. For PLA, if you click next, it's going to say PET G. You can store the settings, load settings, and resetting the defaults will reset you to the defaults um, of the machine. Probably don't ever want to click that. Change filament. Pretty self-explanatory menu about the printer. Shows you the printer info. You can get the board info. And you can get the thermistor info. Oh, one thing to point out that I've changed is I've set the baud rate down to 115200 as it's more for when you're using a host like Octoprint. But some people were having errors with uh, thermal runway issues. Um, they were getting thermal runway errors and items like that, as well as some zits and blobs on their prints. Uh, turning that down uh, seems to have fixed that issue. Whenever you see question marks like this, 
The machine's not 100% sure that that's where it is. So it's going to want to force you, it's going to home it before it'll allow you to do anything. Anyway, let's talk about bed leveling. The way you get to bed leveling is you click on the icon there, and then you would click on motion. Now I can do bed leveling here, and then I have the tramming option. It's going to do the point to point tramming that you're familiar with with the regular Neptune. Next point will take you through the various points once you get your dial set in. Okay. If I click level bed, it's actually going to go ahead and run through the mapping of the bed. So it's beginning to create my mesh and I'm going to let this finish and I'll be back when it's done. Okay, it's almost done leveling. One enhancement I made based on my previous versions was I figured out the screens in the the beds in the way of the screen. So, when it's done trim, when it's done doing its sequence, which it just finished, we're going to let it stop and you're going to see it take the tool head back and center your nozzle on top of the bed. Now you have access to the screen. I probably need to note that my bed's a mess. I had a little bit of a pet G disaster. Um, I'm going to be cleaning that up here after I get this video series done. All right, I'm going to walk through the initial steps of how to do your Z probe offsets. I do recommend you do this preheated for PLA. I'm going to do it quiet just to avoid the noise. All right, so settings, gear icon, configuration, advanced settings, probe offsets, Z probe offset wizard or Z probe wizard. It's going to home the machine. It is going to take a minute. The initial running takes a little long because it homes. Then it does its standard probe. It's going to probe for a Z reference. Once it gets its Z reference, it's going to move the nozzle to that Z reference. This is where you would then slide your piece of paper underneath. So let's pretend I slid my piece of paper underneath. It initially sets the value to 10, which obviously is 10 millimeters high, which is crazy. You're going to want to make sure you're at move to one millimeter. Click that. Do not use the slider. You will go to extremes. Use the minus arrow and take yourself down. I'm going to go minus one. Yeah, I'm not, I'm, I'm pretty tight. To, I'm, you know, I want to adjust a little bit. So let's stay at one and then I go and move my paper. Let's say, yeah, that that's actually a little tight, but, but kind of there I can click check. I can then kind of, Hey, I need to bump this up again. Use these buttons rather than the slider. So, Oh, that that's actually starting to feel pretty good. I think I might want to go a little bit tighter so I can go down to 0.25 and then I can take it to 675. And let's say that that feels like the ideal setting. You hit check, you click next, and you click done. And it'll save those settings at 067. Now again, be sure to store your settings. So configuration, store settings. Okay, the last thing I want to show you is live Z offstepping or baby offstepping as they call it. So I've got a print running. Okay, it's not actually running, it's heating up, but I can still get to the menu to show you how it's done. Okay, so anyway, click on configuration. You'll only see this when you're printing, but click on the tune menu and then you can adjust the various things here, the bed, the nozzle, bed temperature and things like that, the fan speed and the flow. But click the next button and you'll see probe Z offset here while it's printing. I can actually adjust this down, hold it up and down so that it'll baby offset for me. I do not recommend you using this slider because it will go in extreme directions and you can ram your bed. Just note that. So this would be how you live baby offset by pressing this up and minus at the same time. When you get it tuned in where you want, click the check mark and you're good. If you're confident that you're good there, then I would recommend after you're done printing to go to configuration and store those settings. 
That's all I got for you guys. Thanks a lot, and I really appreciate your support.